Ben the farmer was overjoyed to discover that his horse was expecting. It indicated that he was about to acquire another horse, which, if it was a good horse, might result in further financial prosperity. The time was almost here after months of waiting. The mare was about to deliver the foal. Strangely enough, despite having a huge stomach, it refused to give birth. Ben made the decision to obtain an ultrasound at the neighborhood vet. The moment the veterinarian viewed the ultrasound, he alerted the police. The cops informed the vet that they would arrive right away when he called them. More than simply a veterinarian was required to help this animal. There was plainly something weird going on in this horse's stomach, and it needed surgery. It might even be a matter of life or death. When the cops eventually showed up, they assisted the veterinarian in tranquilizing the now nearly lifeless huge horse. However, the police did not just assist the vet. They also visited Ben. Sir, you must accompany us. It's critical. Ben experienced shock. What was wrong with him? Ben responded to inquiries about himself and the horse he'd ridden since he was a child. After finishing all the inquiries, he heard shock coming from the operating room. This is unbelievable, the vet exclaimed. But what exactly did the horse's internal examination reveal that so shocked the doctor? Ben's horse has been carrying a foal for about a year now. Ben was desperate for a second horse, and because he adored his current mount, Felicia, so much, he made the difficult decision to ensure that Felicia could give birth to a foal. Ben needed to locate a certified someone to lawfully impregnate his horse. He searched for someone who could do this legally for months without success. Ben questioned whether he would have to concede that his dream was unrealistic and consider getting a horse instead. But eventually, after months of looking, Ben discovered the right man. Due to his prompt availability, he stood in front of Ben's home within days to ensure Felicia became pregnant. Ben was eagerly anticipating the moment Felicia would give birth. Even though the procedure had been drawn out and slow, Ben eventually succeeded. Ben requested a first ultrasound from the veterinarian after a couple of weeks to determine whether Felicia was truly pregnant. Following the ultrasound, the veterinarian gave the results. When the horse was examined by the veterinarian, both the animal and its foal appeared to be in good health but things did not turn out as expected later in the pregnancy. At first, Felicia struggled to get as much sleep as she had before becoming pregnant. On top of that, Ben was no longer able to accompany her on walks in the stables, which she had truly enjoyed doing. Ben, however, was unable to determine why this was the case. Felicia's agitation increased as the pregnancy progressed. Since the veterinarian assured him that this was typical, Ben believed it would soon be over. However, the week before she was due to give birth to her tiny foal, she hit her breaking point. Felicia resisted giving birth despite Ben making all the necessary preparations to ensure a peaceful delivery. Ben had no choice but to call the veterinarian, but he was asked questions he didn't anticipate. Ben was questioned by the veterinarian about Felicia's specific behavior. She was first restless, but now she hardly moved, according to Ben. Ben's responses astonished the vet, who then informed Ben that Felicia needed to be properly laid out on the ground. The veterinarian stated that Felicia needed to be thoroughly stretched out since it might be time for her to give birth to a new calf. But Felicia wasn't exactly simple to push because of how hostile she seemed. Ben was concerned that his horse would attack him. Was doing this really a good idea, he wondered? But what if she actually attacked Ben? That scenario could not have a happy ending for Ben or his horse. There had to be another option. The veterinarian advised Ben that doing this was the only surefire method to ensure the survival of both his mare and her baby. Ben took sure to approach Felicia quietly after learning that. When he was nearby, he made sure to place himself correctly to ensure that Felicia would not feel any discomfort during everything she went through. The veterinarian requested Ben to feel Felicia's stomach after he had properly stretched her out. Maybe there was a tiny bulge that he missed early in the pregnancy. Ben searched carefully, and what he discovered astonished him. He actually noticed a small protrusion that he'd never seen before. What did this signify, though? What about his horse? Ben quickly inquired as to Felicia's safety from the doctor. However, the vet's response did not really provide much solace. The veterinarian's tone abruptly altered, and all he said was, I need to do an ultrasound. I'm coming right now. Ben was instructed to calm down by the vet. He promised to arrive in 30 minutes. However, the veterinarian did not anticipate such issues. 
Even getting to Ben's place presented a hurdle. The vet got detained in traffic for a lot longer than she anticipated because she was unaware that it was actually rush hour. For Felicia to have the best chance of giving birth to her baby, the veterinarian realized she needed to get to the horse as soon as possible. Ben, who was becoming increasingly anxious, suggested that one of his pals bring a motorcycle to pick up the veterinarian. She may then arrive as quickly as possible. The veterinarian agreed to this plan, so she left to return to her office while awaiting a ride from one of Ben's closest friends. A few minutes later, they arrived at Ben's ranch after Ben's friend picked up the veterinarian from her office. Felicia was completely immobile as the veterinarian began her inspection. But as the veterinarian approached, she started to move once more. In order to ensure that Felicia was no longer a threat to her or Ben, the veterinarian needed to sedate her. However, sedating this horse was not as simple. Any assistance was needed by the veterinarian. Ben and his companion first kept their distance from Felicia in the hopes that she would stop acting aggressively as she became more and more hostile. However, it wasn't the case. What ought she to do right now? The veterinarian was aware that she had no other choices. The vet could administer stronger medications than they could, but there were risks involved. Felicia and her foal might not have made it out of this alive. Ben was asked by the doctor what he desired. Ben couldn't decide between the options. It was quite difficult to decide. Ben was aware that if he made the wrong decision, this might go terribly wrong. But specifically, which decision was erroneous? He gave both choices careful consideration before asking the vet about the potential drawbacks to each option. After much thought, he chose to follow his emotions rather than his rational mind. Ben gave the vet permission to administer stronger medications because he was aware that Felicia needed to be sedated in order for her to deliver her baby successfully. As Felicia became increasingly hostile, they initially needed to get to safety. Ben and his companion were told to leave the stables carefully by the vet, but Felicia was less than enthusiastic about the suggestion. Ben was hesitant to leave her in this situation because she became even more violent than before. Was it worth it? Felicia appeared to be both restless and in pain. For her own benefit, it was best to have her put to sleep as soon as possible. Ben, therefore, left more soon than he had intended. The vet could now perform his duties. The veterinarian prepared the medications and sedated Felicia while Ben and his companion were away. He waited till she was asleep for a while before beginning to get ready for the ultrasound he was about to do. Both Ben and the vet were under tension during these minutes. Was Felicia experiencing a difficult situation? The ultrasound wasn't as simple to perform as it first appeared because Felicia wasn't in the best posture because she was restless. Ben was instructed to help the veterinarian stretch the animal into a favorable position. The ultrasonography procedure could then be completed by the veterinarian. The veterinarian's tone shifted as she conducted the ultrasound. It gradually shifted from being upbeat to being negative. Ben was aware of this, but he feared that he would distract the doctor. Later, he regretted not approaching her sooner. The veterinarian informed Ben that she had an urgent phone call to make after spending several minutes examining the ultrasound. Ben, though, was unaware of the vet's intended contact. At first, Ben became anxious. Were his horses okay? She already had a plan when the veterinarian returned. The veterinarian reassured Ben that his horses were in good health, but advised Felicia to take some time off before giving birth to her foal. Ben nodded in agreement and followed the veterinarian inside his ranch. But after a short while, he heard an odd noise. At his ranch, Ben overheard the police approaching. Yet, why? He initially had no idea what was going on, but eventually he understood the vet had called the cops. Ben, though, was still puzzled as to why she had phoned them. The vet then gave Ben an explanation of the circumstances. The vet discovered something that wasn't supposed to be in the horse's belly with the foal, and she informed Ben that his horse needed surgery. She now only employed a basic sedative, therefore she needed assistance from the local police with tools to complete the surgery and adequately sedate Felicia. Ben realized what was going on and soon became calm. He immediately allowed the police officers to carry out their duties on his land. Ben, however, could not believe what the policeman said to him when the officer approached him. The policeman said, Sir, you must accompany us. We need to get some information from you. Ben was puzzled by this. What made them want to interrogate him? Nothing he did was incorrect. He chose to respond to the inquiries, however, in order to end the suffering as he had nothing to conceal. 
the officers began by posing straightforward queries. Ben had to affirm that he was the person they were speaking with and that the horse in the stables belonged to him. Ben thought it was weird that the subsequent questions delved into further detail. They wanted to know these things, but why? They inquired as to how his mare initially became pregnant. Ben said that he spoke with a specialist who could assist him in this. He also mentioned that he checked the expert's background to ensure that everything he did was legal. Ben even provided the police his sources to ensure that they knew what he had done was legal. Ben was understood by the police, who acknowledged that everything was lawful, but insisted that they still wanted additional information from him. Ben was surprised when the policeman pulled something out of his luggage. The police officer's mugshot was distinct from that of possible criminals. They inquired as to whether Ben could recognize anyone in the images. Ben experienced shock. After seeing numerous photos, he recognized a face. He was able to conceive Felicia thanks to the expert's face. He was a suspect. But why? Ben was aware of no criminal activity on his part. Ben started to worry more and more. What was done to this man's horse? Did Felicia's inability to give birth naturally have anything to do with it? Shortly later, the cops gave a situational explanation. Although he was an authority on horses, this individual also had a history of illegal medical practices. Because he frequently experimented with novel medical procedures on many species of animals, the police were already looking for him, and it informed veterinarians. What specifically did he do to Felicia, though? On the ultrasound, the veterinarians saw two odd objects, one of which was a medical chip in Felicia's abdomen. Thanks to their contact, when the vet saw it, he understood he had to notify the police. Due to the fact that the chip was produced illegally by the expert who assisted Ben, the authorities were searching for it. The cops assisted the vet throughout the procedure to extract the chip and identify it as coming from the expert. Not only did they take out the chip, but they were also delighted to assist in the birth of a brand new foal that was not your typical young stallion. The second thing the veterinarian noted on the ultrasound was that this foal was a unique specimen that might be extremely valuable. The vet couldn't believe his eyes when Felicia had delivered her foal following the surgery. He had never before encountered such a remarkable creature. Ben was informed by the veterinarian that the likelihood of this occurring was one in a million. Ben had only thought in his head, despite the fact that this horse might be extremely valuable. He named Siempre for the new foal, which he intended to keep. After going through everything together, he realized that he and his horse shared a unique link that he would never be able to break. After all, the cops also succeeded in locating the specialist and taking him into custody. Ben could finally go on to live a happy life on his property with his two horses.